Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahado Bible Study Podcast. As always, share, subscribe, and support. You may subscribe wherever you are hearing this. You may share the very words of God that you hear read aloud by me to you all, and for myself for that matter, because the word of God is a double-edged sword. And you may support by heading over to patreon.com slash tawahado, that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash t-e-w-a-h-i-d-o, or aksum, a-k-s-u-m, dot substack dot com. Thank you. We are in the second chapter of Romans, con- continuing our assault, our siege upon Rome alongside the Apostle Paul, or the small one, the diminutive one, the belittled one. We are reading aloud from the King James Version, and here's Romans 2, verses 1 to 11. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds? To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. The litany of evils that were mentioned in chapter one, remember there are no chapters in the original, function as does the law. The law here is tricky because it's the nomos, it's the law which is in Greek, but the Hebrew is always controlling the Greek, and the Hebrew being translated here is Torah, which is the teaching or the instruction. So the litany of evils from homosexuality to disobedience of parents to greediness and avarice and murder and anger and all of those things, they function as a reminder as the Torah or the instruction or the teaching, which are this mirror that shows us how ugly we are and how incapable we are of attaining perfection. It's a deep dig against us as human beings. And if you want to judge someone, that is to mark or identify someone else as an outsider and yourself as an insider, then you have to realize you are doing the same things, the same idolatry. You're worshiping the same idols. You are committing adultery against the same Lord. So there is a need for this forbearance and long-suffering of God to be understood as us as an opportunity to repent. Every moment God lets you breathe, it's so that you can turn 180 degrees, face him, and begin walking towards him and continue walking towards him until he returns to judge all those who've ever lived and all those who've ever died. Not with partiality, not with favoritism, not with, as the KJV says, respect of persons, but with this idea that there is a just God. And this is 
picking up from Galatians. You'll see a lot of connections between Romans and Galatians, and I'll mention it. The Jew first was mentioned twice, and the Greek or the Gentile, the Hellenist, uh, according to your translation, of course, the high culture person that is, uh, you know, of the culture that Alexander the Great spread all over the place, according to his master Aristotle and his master Plato. And you could go into his master Socrates if you want. But the idea is that God is faithful to the Jews, so they are first in line. They are a random sample population that originally is supposed to go back to Adam anyway and thus include all of humankind. And so the salvation, deliverance, and rescue that is applied to them is then extrapolated to the Greek or to the Gentile, to the Scythian, to the Ethiopian, to all of humankind. Verses 12 to 16. For as many as have sinned without law, without teaching, shall also perish without law, without teaching. And as many as have sinned in the teaching shall be judged by the teaching. For not the hearers of the teaching are just before God, but the doers of the teaching shall be justified or declared righteous. For when the Gentiles, which have not the teaching, do by nature the things contained in the teaching, these having not the teaching are a teaching unto themselves, which show the work of the teaching written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. So this is hilarious because when you think about the American Christian and their fear of the works-based salvation, oh no, what do you do with a line like, each one will be recorded according to their works? Or this distinction between hearing the teaching and doing the teaching. If all that mattered was not works, but your thoughts, your theory rather than practice, then you could just be a hearer of the teaching. You don't need to be a doer of the teaching, but that's not what Romans says. Romans says hear and do, which is another reminder or an homage to Hebrews, which we'll also see. Father Paul Nadine Trazi likes to mention this story of his son who's traveled the world and and uh, seen amongst many different peoples, the kind of Eastern members of the steppe, distantly related to the Scythians, which are the Mongols. And the Mongols have certain parts of their culture in which they love their neighbor. And the brilliant thing is if you acknowledge Jesus as judge rather than you, and if you're not trying to dethrone him from his, his throne or his seat of judgment, then on judgment day, you who you say you're a great Orthodox Christian, if you are not a doer of the teaching and yet somehow some random pagan Mongolian is, guess what? Jesus can make you an outsider and that Mongol an insider. And you're going to be very salty, very frustrated in that day. But that's that's it. I've told this story before, a similar kind of uh, general region the uh, Nepalese. So there were some Nepalese who obviously were not Christian and could not speak English while I was living in North Dakota. And there was one moment where I underestimated negative 27 degrees Fahrenheit. I didn't know what that was like. And what happened was the laundry detergent I left in my car froze over solid. They saw me in the laundry room when I made this realization. And before I had to rush to go and get a new one, without any words exchanged, they gave me their laundry detergent. And I was so thankful to them. And in that moment, it made me reflect and think, the Lord may see the mercy that they are doing, whether they have heard the gospel message or not, and he may shine favorably upon them. Now, I'm not going to wring his hand and try to force him, you know, that, that that gets you into the other area of heresy against the judgment of Christ. There's one group of people that want to save all people. There's another group of people who want to damn all people. And the truth is Jesus can damn whomever he wants. So he can damn everyone or he could damn no one. He can save everyone or he could save no one. He could save some people and he could damn others. The point is, if he is the judge, he is the one who makes that decision because another word for judgment is a decision. Finally, 
What's interesting here is that Paul says it is my gospel. Ho ego evangelion dia Christos Jesus. Through Christ Jesus, my gospel, my evangel, my evangelion, my good news. This is so interesting. I have heard this before many times, but I think it is a great homage to the Pauline school, which is the dominant school of the New Testament church. Believe me or not, we'll leave that topic for another day. Verses 17 through 24. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and retest in the teaching, and makest to thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the teaching, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the teaching. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the teaching through breaking the teaching, dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. This last line here about the name of God being blasphemed, about those who say they know is from the great Dedek Hadis, the dry New Testament, the scroll of Isaiah chapter 52, verse five. So it's an invitation to read chapter 52 of Isaiah. It's also an invitation to read the entire scroll of Isaiah. And this is the prime kind of acknowledgement that theory, as I mentioned earlier, does not grant you a senior status. Practice does. Each of these positions listed here are that of a senior rather than a junior. You have a guide and then you have the blind. Obviously, the guide is senior. You have a teacher and you have babes. Obviously, the teacher is senior. You have an instructor and you have the foolish. The instructor is senior. You have light and darkness. Light is obviously senior. So all of these various positions are listed in repetitive form to emphasize the point that if you think that the litany of sins do not apply to you and you try to kick someone out of the kingdom, you better make sure that you yourself know what you are talking about. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble and you will be judged by the very same metric and you'll be guilty of the very things you're accusing someone else of doing. So be very careful of that and go read Isaiah chapter 52, verse 5, but especially, especially, but in general, Isaiah 52, verses 25 to the end. For circumcision, oh, this is very Galatians-esque, for circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the teaching, but if thou be a breaker of the teaching, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, of the teaching, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the teaching, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision dost transgress the teaching? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh." But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. This is amazing. So just so you understand, I have provided a number of resources for you to realize Paul is not making up this teaching this distinction between the fleshly act of the covenant located in the penis of the circumcision is actually located in the heart and the spirit. 
That is your thoughts and the way you move, your thoughts and your deeds and actions. And for you to realize this, I'll give you two main categories of scripture. We'll put the Ketubim aside, the writings aside for now, and just talk about the Torah and the Nebim. The Torah is, as I've said, the instruction or the teaching. Those are the first five books of the Bible. The Samaritans and the Sadducees, among other groups, accepted this as scripture. So if you come across a Sadducee, if you come across a Samaritan, you can show them, not even with Romans chapter 2, but with Leviticus and Deuteronomy, the teaching of circumcision of the heart. Throughout scripture, you'll see circumcision, not only of the private part, but of the heart, of the lips, and of the ears. I'm going to give you several examples right now so that we can close on this thought, but I want you to thoroughly understand that if they believe in the Nebim or the prophets as well, you can give them Jeremiah and Ezekiel. So make sure you write this down and look it up. This is your homework for the teaching of circumcision of the heart, of the thought, the figurative circumcision, the spiritual circumcision. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 41. That's Leviticus chapter 26, verse 41. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 to 17. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 through 17. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 26. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 44, verses 7 to 9. Ezekiel chapter 44, verses 7 to 9. Glory to God for all things. And may he grant us all the circumcision of the heart, the circumcision of the lips, and the circumcision of the ears.